Hello, everybody, and welcome to another product spotlight. Today, I have an amazing guest with me. I have Bryce Geisel from Coke Fertilizer Canada. Bryce, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How about you? I am doing fantastic. A nice snowy day in Manitoba here. <laughs> I am ready to chat. We are doing a product spotlight, and we're going to be speaking about Wolf Tracks DDP micronutrients. So, before we hop in, can you tell our audience a little bit about you and your role with Coke? Absolutely. So, uh, as you mentioned, my name is Bryce Geisel. So, I'm the senior agronomist for Canada uh, with the team here at Coke Fertilizer Canada and work as an agent of Coke Agronomic Services. And one of the interesting things with my role is I get to work with researchers, uh, retails, agronomists, farmers right across the country, and really with a focus on kind of looking to better understand that nutrient use efficiency in crop production. Excellent. That's an exciting role. You get the best of everything, right? You get to a work little bit, yeah. Yeah, nice. Okay, so why don't you tell myself and the audience a little bit more about Wolf Tracks DDP? Sure, absolutely. So Wolf Tracks DDP is a product line of readily available micronutrients that's uh, found as a dry dispersible powder. And there are a lot of options out there with it to really be able to select your choice on what you might need for your operations and really be able to implement it right into what you're doing with your nutrient plan already on your farm. Okay, fantastic. So the typical farmer, when they're thinking about nutrients, the first thing I assume that would come to their mind is NPK, right? They're the top of the list. Is there other nutrients that should be on farmers' minds? So absolutely. So everyone does think about the NPK and sometimes uh, S gets in there. So your nitrogen, your phosphorus, your potassium, sulfur, because those are your macronutrients. That's the ones everyone knows. That's the big amounts you're putting down in your field for your crops. But there are that subcategory, I'm sure people have heard about them a little bit, so they're called micronutrients, and these are just as essential to your crop production, your crop growth, uh, as the macronutrients, they're just needed in much smaller amounts, that's where the micro comes from, you just need a little bit of them to, to go with that, versus you need usually a large amount uh, with the macronutrients. And there's many common ones, I'm sure people have heard of them before, so there's boron, zinc, copper, manganese tend to be kind of the four most common out there. But there's a number of others as well that could be, you know, potentially be thinking about depending on your soil type, your crops and in, in your growing region. Okay, let's dive in. I'm fascinated by this stuff all the time. So do you want to talk a little bit more about the micronutrients and why they're important? Sure, absolutely. So micronutrients are important. Like I said, they are essential to your crop growth and they are needed in all sorts of different aspects of your crop. So some of them are going to be really important on chlorophyll, which we know is very important for the ability to plant to harvest that energy from the sun. And they're also very important for carbohydrate uh, production and movement. So that's, of course, the sugars, the starches that we need for those crops grow to fill the grain at the end of the day. Uh, there are also some that are more important for rooting, so down into the soil, especially early season, some for shoot growth. And of course, there's always some that are going to be needed for flowering, uh, getting that grain production started, and even protein. So they, they are involved in all the processes you think about with the crop as it's growing through the field. Uh, again, there are a lot of them are will be just a little bit, but they're integral into each of those components. So. Bryce, you are making me flash back about 20 years to University of Manitoba, my plants class in agriculture diploma. Just hearing you talk about all these things, I'm like, wow, yes. <laughs> it all comes it. full circle back around. Yeah, all the all those things we had to learn. Yeah, they're still they're still just as applicable today as they were back then. And sometimes we kind of forget about them, but it's good to keep that focus and remind that, yeah, there are different pieces and it's all important at the end of the day to get that yield off the field. I love it. So for farmers in the audience, how can we tell if our soils are deficient in a particular micronutrient? No, that's always the question, especially with micronutrients. Um, and there's really two ways that, that I tend to think about deficiency of micronutrients. So the first is probably the one that most people jump to mind. So that's going to be, there's just not enough of that nutrient in the soil. This might've shown up in a soil test. So you went out, you sampled, you get the soil test back. Um, Western Canada does a lot in the fall. I know out east, they can't get away with those same things they have to in the spring, a little faster turnaround time. But you get that number back, you know, like, oh, that doesn't look good. Those numbers are looking a little low for whatever it might be. 
uh, or perhaps it didn't get caught. And uh, just depending on the soil, the, the year, uh, you start to see those deficiencies in the plant. Some of them, when you get in that true deficiency standpoint, you will start to see some symptomology. They all have different symptomologies and you kind of get that point. And those are you know important to really think about how you're going to deal with those. And it's probably going to be a multi-year approach on building those nutrients back into the soil. So that's kind of the, the, the first big one. Now, when does that happen? It's probably not as common as we'll see with some of those macronutrients. We know when we run out of nitrogen or phosphorus, those tend to be a little bit more visible, maybe a little more regular, but it does happen with micronutrients uh, with that. The other one is probably the one that we don't think as much about in terms of deficiency. And that's really going back to that, looking at a longer term approach, so multiple years and looking at plant uptake and removal. So as I mentioned, you know, those nutrients are essential. They're getting taken up in the plant in small amounts, uh, but some of that's gonna go back to the soil and that nutrient cycling, but some of it's coming off in the grain. So that's that removal aspect. So that's looking at how do we manage that over multiple years as we remove a little bit of that micronutrient year after year after year. So kind of that repetitive removal, we'll get a little bit of cycling coming through, but your trend probably is going to be going down. And how do we look at managing that over the long term? Well, it might be adding nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium back into the field, but we're not adding those micronutrients. And what we can actually get is in a situation where kind of our nutrient balance is wrong. We've got lots of these other you know nutrients in, but there's that one that's maybe just running a little bit short. And what we learn is that that there's that Liebig's law of the minimum. So what is the lowest thing that we hit with our yield target? So if we if we kind of cap out on that micronutrient, even though we've had enough nitrogen or phosphorus down, enough rainfall, enough sunshine, enough heat units, we may not get the yields because we're just capped on there. And so that you might get a little bit of that deficiency that's being induced from a nutrient balance that doesn't show a typical deficiency symptomology, but is something that needs to be addressed. And sometimes we can monitor that in soil tests or tissue tests and, and just something we need to be looking at, you know, year over year and making sure we account for that nutrient balance and that uptake and removal piece. Okay. Fantastic. So let's talk a little bit more about wolf tracks then. Let's talk about conventional micronutrient products versus wolf tracks DDP. Do you want to go there and share a little bit about your product with us? Sure, absolutely. So there are a lot of different micronutrient products on the market, and they're all going to be a little bit different on what we're trying to accomplish with each of them. So I'll very specifically talk about the Wolf Tracks DDP um, with that. So that's kind of the, the the terminology we want to use. And what does that DDP stand for? It's, it's a dry dispersible powder. So that's what it is. And it is a combination of very readily available micronutrients. And there's a number of different ones within that brand that you might be targeting. So we talked about some of those common micronutrients that you can utilize so that so you can kind of choose depending on what you're targeting within your field, uh, within your crops. And what do with the, this product, we, we take that and we apply it onto your bulk fertilizer. So maybe your nitrogen, your phosphorus, or your blend that you're using, uh, it can supply it onto that as, as a dry dispersible powder. And that way it coats each of those uh, granules, those frills very evenly and gets a little bit of that nutrient spread out across the field, which is really going to help with that nutrient use efficiency because you're getting it spread uh, right across the field and getting good distribution for availability for your crops. That is interesting. That is really interesting. So that was, you kind of touched a little bit on my next two questions. I wanted to ask you about DDP being applied to your NPK fertilizer. And then I think that's what you guys call the even coat technology, right? That's correct. Yeah, the even code technology allows that distribution onto those granules. So as I mentioned, you can uh, if it gets applied to the bulk fertilizer you're already doing. So it's already something that the farmer is already going to be doing on their field. It might be their nitrogen, phosph, blend, whatever it might be. You're able to coat that. So then you get this micronutrient coating on each of those frills and get that distribution uh, on there. And so that's going to be very important to make sure that it gets spread out evenly across the field. You know, all the plants within the field have easy access to that nutrient and it's going to be a readily, readily available source of micronutrient that the crop can access. Oh, excellent. Okay. So do you want to touch any more on DDP, the even coat being applied? I think we covered that. Do you want to, if you have anything else to add, go ahead. My next question for you is when farmers are looking for micronutrient products, how do they, what should they be looking for and how do they know they're choosing the right product? Do you want to touch on that? 
Uh, sure, no, absolutely. Um, so in, in terms of when we look at kind of choosing a product, it really is going to determine what it is you're trying to accomplish within that field. Um, and where Wolf Tracks is really going to shine is on those, as I kind of touched on a little bit earlier in that kind of that secondary deficiency we think about is within that uptake and removal. That's really what we're kind of targeting. And we see the, the, the biggest effect that we can have from a micronutrient standpoint is because we're coding on that NPK uh, S, you know, whether it's singular or uh, blend of, of those elements, uh, we're able to get a good distribution right across the field. We're getting lots of uh, that nutrient right at each spot. So that's going to put it right close to those crop roots. It's going to be easily to access it um, and the crop's going to be able to take it up. So we're going to target that uh, approach where we've got that uptake. So we want to make sure that that crop has easy uptake to it, can find it easily. We know, especially in the spring, cold soils, those roots get a little bit, especially up here in Canada, as we deal with some, you know, probably a colder November than we've had in a little bit and definitely, you know, snowier in parts of it. Um, but as we go into spring, we, we have very cold soils. Those roots are, can be slow to get established. We want to make sure that there's a good distribution, good spread, good availability of readily available uh, nutrients that the crop can access. So that's going to be a big part of the uptake part. And then the removal part. So as we're taking a little bit, we want to be, you know, we want to be looking at how do we approach that? Can we give a little bit of those micronutrients each year so that way we're kind of keeping that level balanced. We're not getting at that part where in the future we might be in a deficiency and then all of a sudden we're having to, you know, figure out how do we build again? We're, we're not in a build program, we're in a maintaining program. And that is definitely where Wolfchick shines the best is really being able to kind of maintain that micronutrient levels within the field and give equal and easy access for your crop as it's growing. Excellent. This has been very interesting, Bryce, thank you. Do you have anything else you want to add? If not, I'm just going to do a call out. If farmers are interested, where can they learn more about the product and connect with someone? Sure. No, absolutely. So obviously in the in the world of micronutrients, um, it's going to really vary, for, uh, especially in response from field to field and crop to crop. Um, and that's something to be think, keeping in mind for farmers is, uh, you know, a lot of times we'll, they'll maybe apply and it might work on one field or not another, one crop, not another. Um, and that is very typical with micronutrients because they are needed in such small amounts and cycling. So it is, you know, having those conversations with your retail, with your agronomist, reaching out to a Coke agronomic services rep talking to someone about the product wolf tracks you know having a look at those soil tests what are your goals and how does that establish in there so it is definitely uh, one of these worlds that's maybe not as cut and dry as we like to in the with micronutrients but they're very important and it's something we we can't lose sight of and making sure that the crop has all the nutrients it needs because um, sometimes we uh, get a little limited and I'm sure many farmers or agronomists have been out there and that crops you know look pretty good but maybe just didn't quite hit the yield targets people were hoping for um, might be a good look to see as maybe it was a micronutrient issue you weren't in a deficiency situation you just maybe didn't quite have enough to hit those the the target yields you would hope to to achieve so I think you know have those co honest conversations um, with your retail with your agronomist and with a co agronomic service rep and that'll be a great way to kind of get a little bit more information uh, or else you can always go check it out for those who maybe like the online stuff you can go at co-k-o-c-h agronomic services.ca Bryce, this has been fantastic. I have learned a lot, a lot of great information. So thank you so much for joining us on this product spotlight. All right, perfect. Well, thanks for having me. And uh, absolutely, I was happy to be here and hopefully be able to provide a little bit of information to your listeners out there. It was amazing. Thank you so much. You guys in the audience, if you like this as much as I did, like it, share it and get it out there and check out their website to learn more. Thanks, guys. See you next time. Bye-bye.